Hello, adventure enthusiast! Here are some vintage trading videos EBO produced in the late 1990s. These videos actually helped get us blacklisted from a leading trade association. After all, training was reserved for only certain approved vendors, right? Ha ha ha! Fast forward to present day where the coronavirus has shut down our industry. Every vendor seems to be clamoring for a virtual presence and is creating training content in this new era of online learning. So we thought it about time to blow off the digital dust and make these videos available once again. Enjoy! <laughs> now here's that same video from before of Paul testing that rope behind the Jeep. So not only were we looking at how the rope handled the load, but we've got a figure eight at the trailer hitch and a bowling on a biter on the tree. We wanted to see how the knots performed as well under this extreme load to failure. The first knot we're gonna look at is the bowling on the bite. Got an 11 millimeter static rope here and I want to go ahead and get a biter rope and the easiest way for me to do this is take a bite have my tail way out in front of me and once I get the bite I'm going to kind of hold it in my left palm with my left palm facing upward my right hand is going to come over my left palm with my thumb towards my abdomen and I'm going to pinch the rope with my two fingers and my thumb underneath. And when I pinch that, I'm going to just curl my left fingertips to hold the rope stationary. And I'm going to pull the rope to my right. At the same time, I'm going to twist it up. And what that gives me, obviously from the way I sit, is a nice six, like a shape of a number six. Then I'm going to take the other end of the bite and I'm going to go up through that hole. And then what I want to do is take this bite back over itself and pull these two side lines through the bite. So I'm going to go over, grab the two side lines, and I'm going to pull that through. That's the basic shape. At this point, I want to now go through and dress the knot so it loads evenly and is symmetrical in its shape. A dressed knot will hold stronger than a messy or non-dressed knot. <clears throat> so that's a figure eight on a, uh, correction, that's a bullet on a bike. The only thing I'd be lacking for ropes course use here would be a double overhand backup knot. But this is the knot we're going to see later in the brake tests. Another knot you're going to see is the figure eight on a bike. Bear with me while I get this one untied. Again, you start off with a good bite of rope. And again, for the way I tie it, which I find most com comfortable for me, is to start with the bite in my left palm up and my right palm down. So both of my thumbs are pointing to my left. At this point, my left hand is just going to curl the bite forward and away from me, keeping the ropes parallel, and then I'm going to go ahead and tuck it up underneath. So I kind of have that six shape again. Now my right thumb becomes important because I want to put it on the bite and use my thumb to leverage it over the top and continue back around underneath and bring the bite up the other end of the bite of the knot itself. If you didn't get that, don't worry. Sometimes I was, I've been not dyslectic as well, so I'll retie that. But in short, you get a figure eight shape and the rope runs smooth and continuous all the way through the knot three dimensionally. So 
so be sure to rotate and roll the nut around and look at it from all sides. So I'll untie that and then tie it again. Take a bite. I go underneath. My thumb pushes it over the top. Still have my bite. Come up underneath the first bend. And then when I tighten it down, I want to imagine the knot has four quadrants. So if we bisect it this way and bisect it lengthwise, I've got a quadrant on this line, a quadrant on this line, a quadrant on this line, and a quadrant off of this line here. So when I set the knot, I want to pull from opposite quadrants, again, to make it all uniform. Three-dimensionally, look at the knot all the way around. It's parallel and even throughout all the three dimensions of the knot. Another way to tie this is going to get a little bit more particular, and it's actually going to be measuring where my tail is and how it back traces through the knot in proportion to where my working end is, or my loaded end, and where it goes in the knot. I'm going to flip it over here. The working end is this line here. If I trace that through the figure eight, I can see it comes up to this point, and then it goes across the widest part or portion of the figure eight. The wider the radial bend, the more it's going to absorb energy, and it puts that energy over more surface area of the rope. And if I tug on this, you can see it'll actually tighten up right here at the widest point. When we do the brake test later on in the DVD, you'll see that this is the stronger knot of the three choices. The first choice being the bullet on a bite, the third choice being a figure eight on a bite with the working end over the widest radial bend. The other version of a figure eight you can tie is with the working end over the short radial bend. And if I just reverse it and have my tail over here towards me versus away from me, if I then tie that knot, Snug it from the four quadrants. Make sure it's addressed from all three dimensions. Now here's my tail, and here's my working end, or my loading end. If I flip the knot over, and look at this knot, I trace it through. My working end, or live end, goes across the top radial bend. And under load, you can watch how it deforms the figure eight. When your working end is over the shortest radial bend, it's a weaker knot. Oddly enough, our tests suggest that even though this is tied across the sharp radial bend, it still breaks tests at a higher strength ratio, this eight being relative to the rope type, against what a bowling on a bite did with itself, the radial bends against its rope type. So you're going to have different handling characteristics of a static rope, which is stiffer, or a stiffer hand, if you will. Um, a dynamic rope will be a little bit more subtle and soft and malleable. But also moisture content, the dirt in your rope, all this will dictate the friction of how well a knot ties or doesn't tie, and also if it's going to degrade its quality and break at a lower strength. So everything else being equal, we went with brand new product with ideally tied knots. At least at this point, the best way I knew how to tie them. But this figure right here, tie with the radial bend at the sharpest point, would be a minimal way to tie a figure eight. A better way to tie it, like I suggested, would be to go ahead and I start again with my bite, my tail points away from my abdomen. And then from here, I tie my figure eight, tighten it from four quadrants, and then when I check it, my working end here goes through, and it's always going to be the widest radial bend. Now I know that may not show up so well on the tape, so what I want to do is use two different rope colors to help kind of accent that point. 
So if I take two different ropes side by side, and I'm going to call the static rope my working end, and the red rope is going to go ahead and be my tail end, when I tie that figure eight, again, the static rope wants to be my working end. In this example, when I pull on it, you can see that the static rope is my sharp radial bend. Rather, my tail end is right here, which is the Y radial bend. So I'd want to retie this knot. So again, I want my working end to be on the widest radial bend, so I'm going to start with my tail on the opposite side from me. And at the tips here, I'm just going to imagine that they've been just glued together, and this is one big rope, and then this is like a big bite, if you will. So imagine these ropes here, the tips are connected, and then that would form my bite. So I go from here, around, up, and through. Again, we're imagining that these are connected and it's one rope, so that would be my clip-in point. But now, with my static rope being my working end, you can see if I pull on it, it takes the widest radial bend here. But I'll make sure I tighten it from all four quadrants. You can see, too, that when I lay the rope over, the static line here goes up and across the widest radial bend of the knot. And our brake test suggests that this is the strongest knot when you tie it this way as a figure eight. What I'd like to do here now is let you look over my shoulder in the same perspective of how I'm going to go ahead and tie the knots. So again, I have a biter rope. My tail's in my right hand. The working or live end is in my left. I'm going to take a big bite of rope here. And again, like I said, for the bullet on a bite, I'm going to start with it with my left hand bring my right hand and thumb underneath over. I'm going to pull and twist it up at the same time. So you can see there as I get my figure six shape of the knot. Then from here I'm going to take the bite up through the hole of the six and then these are the two halves I want to pull through the bite. and then the tongue or the bite will go up behind all of the knot itself. And then I want to dress it again, like I said, so it rolls evenly throughout the entire knot. This is sometimes referred to a double loop bowen on a bite as well. And that's the bowen on a bite. The figure eight. knot that had the working end in the shortest part. Again, I found if I tie it my way, but had the tail start toward my abdomen, and I have my bite, so here's my tail. Here's my tail here toward my stomach. Left palm up, right palm down, both thumbs pointing to my left. Curl it under, right thumb goes ahead and pushes the bite over and come up from underneath. Tighten it from the four quadrants. And like I said, that's a dressed figure eight knot, but the tail being here and the working end here, live end on this side, when I load it, you can see it's going to be the sharpest radial bend and watch it deform when I load on the knot. That's why it's a weaker dressing. So the ideal way is to tie it, and again I found with a bite and my tail on the opposite side from me. Come underneath, push my thumb over, pull up underneath this way. Then when I tighten it from the four quadrants, again, it always comes up dressed if you do it that way. And for me, for consistency, that's important. And now, if I do the load test with the live end here, 
You'll see it deform, it tightens a knot at the widest radial bend at this point here. And that's the stronger knot when you do brake tests. Then just to finish it off, I'll show you what the overhand and a uh, double overhand and a bite looks like. The backup knot as well. Some people refer to it as the monkey fist. I know it as a double overhand backup knot. Take the tail, I go around the live end, cross back on itself, perform an X, go around again the second time, forming an X, and then the tail comes up through the center of both those loops I created, and then I want to snug it down and pull it tight so the backup knot is right against the eight. And then for dressing, I want the tail two to four inches. I use the finger rule. So if I put my finger on the knot, came up to my knuckle, I have about this much too much slack. So what I'd like to do is I'd retie the knot and just have a little bit shorter amount there. But for EBL, at least, that's the knot of choice, is the figure eight on a bite with the working end dressed so it's at the widest radial bend with a double overhand backup knot with at least two to four inches of tail or just roughly a finger length from the fingertip to the knuckle. You also find that knot's easy and to visually inspect at greater distances than a bowling on a bite would be. So a trained eye can actually see that 20 feet away and know it's dressed correctly. Here's your tip quote of the day. A knot, neat knot, knee knot, be knotted. Ha ha ha!